the Northwestern Wildcats and Pat Fitzgerald. Pat, Pat, Pat. Um, three and nine last year. Post game win expectancy said three point four three and eight point five seven. So, yeah, round round about right. Returning production. Normally, after a bad year, Northwestern is gearing up for the next year, right? We've seen this multiple times in Pat Fitzgerald's tenure where you've got a bunch of seniors that uh, graduate, et cetera, and then it takes a couple of years to get the other guys developed into being pretty good. I don't know that I see it this year. Uh, Those numbers last year were really, really bad, and... While I want them to be better, uh, because obviously I have a little bit of a Northwestern bias since our buddies in the Westlot Pirates uh, all went to Northwestern, and they support North- I mean, I, I've been to Ryan Field. Like, I, you know, <laughs> I, like, uh, I like Northwestern. But I don't uh, really like the team this year. So let's start off with the offense. 68% returning production on offense. Uh, the OC, Mike Bajakian, he is longing for the glory days of Peyton Ramsey as the quarterback, of course, from the 2020 season. Uh, but even those numbers were not great for Peyton Ramsey in that bunch. Uh, the quarterback situation has been dreadful. So, you know, Helensky uh, can only improve the situation, I would hope. Running back Cam Porter, back from injury, he missed all of last year. Uh, but that did lead for Evan Hill, excuse me, Evan Hull, to run for 1,000-plus yards this year. So you got two studs at running back this year, so long as uh, Cam Porter comes back healthy from the injury and everything. You're going to need improvement from the wide receivers. Um, Kurtz, Washington, should be healthy now. Uh, Offensive line looks strong. they got to be better than number 100 in stuff rate. I mean, the running backs could not even get past the line before they had somebody hitting them. Uh, And luckily, Hull and that bunch were able to at least do something, you know. Yeah, you look at the offensive uh, numbers, number 112 in PPA per drive, number 118 in passing success rate, uh, number 97 in offensive explosive play rate, but rushing success was number 80. You know, and no, it's not a huge jump up, but like they were at least able to do something. On defense, Jim O'Neill didn't exactly make people forget about Mike Hankwitz in year one at all. Uh, I mean, they, they just, I mean, from the first game, the first play of the first game, they were just getting shredded over and over and over again. Linebacker and defensive line uh, look kind of weak. The secondary, um, even with the loss of Brandon Joseph, like looks to be the strong unit on that side. Four defensive transfers should be able to play a lot this year. Uh, only 58% returning production. Is that actually a good thing when some of the career backups that were thrust into starting roles last year did not perform well, right? So we'll, we'll see. Uh, if you just return production, and it wasn't good, does that mean that they're guaranteed to improve? No. So maybe the other side is, well, we just get rid of all those guys, bring in the new ones, see how we fare with that. Can't be any worse, right? I mean, especially based on what they were last year. Uh, Number 107 in PPA per drive, number 108 in rushing success rate allowed, number 101 in passing success rate allowed. Uh, Just brutal. They are projected favorites in three games. Their win total sits at four, and it's juiced to the under at minus 125. Everything was bad last year. Let's talk about keys to the season. Uh, I mean, field position was brutal. Turnover margin was number 102. Uh, I will tell you this. There is something about Pat Fitzgerald teams where they do not beat themselves as far as penalties go. They were pretty disciplined there, number 14 in the country. Uh, Fitzgerald does this dance, right? Good season, bad season. 2018, it was 9-5. and five. 2020, 7 and 2, but in 2019, 3 and 9, 2021, 3 and 9. Like the issue is going into those good seasons, you could at least see talent and experience and what they were building towards. Right now, I have no idea. Like, absolutely no clue. The offense was number 130 in goal to go touchdown rate last year. They were number 122 in points per scoring opportunity. Like, you got to be able to finish drives this year. Uh, The numbers were. Just abysmal. And while there are a few pieces here that could bring a little bit of hope, like a bowl appearance for me this year would be an absolute shock for this team. I've got them going three and nine. Would it surprise me if they get to four wins, maybe five? No. If they get to six wins, I I would be shocked. I would absolutely be shocked. So I I wish for the best 
for Northwestern. But who that is a tough road to hoe, and I don't know. I don't know if I trust Jim O'Neill. I don't know if I trust Bajakian. Uh, I should trust Pat Fitzgerald at this point, and yet, and yet I don't right now. Maybe I should. Hey, you Northwestern fans, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what the hope is for this season. What can we reasonably expect for the Wildcats? Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.